In this video, we are going to talk about modulation, why we need modulation, and some types of modulation. So the modulation is simply shifting heteronining, or we can also call it as translation of frequency. So from one band to another band. So basically we shift the frequency from one band to another band. So the question is why do we do it? What is the rationale of this translation? The first rationale is an efficient mode of of radiation and by efficient what we mean is uh, that an antenna having a size which is uh, roughly wavelength divided by f so this wavelength is related with frequency and uh, we have the expression which is c is equal to f lambda so the c is speed of light f is frequency in hertz and uh, lambda is the wavelength so this dictates that lambda is inversely proportional to frequency and it is directly proportional with the antenna size. So that is as the frequency increases, uh, the wavelength decreases and we can have a practical small antenna. So this means in the spectrum, uh, on the x-axis we have an increasing frequency. So this means that we have a decreasing wavelength. So as we move towards the right side, we would need smaller antennas. So this GSM band, this is used for our 2G communication systems. This is for 3G communication systems and so on. We also have a GSM band over here which is uh, mostly at 860 megahertz now i'm going to simplify and approximate it to roughly one gigahertz if this is our frequency so the wavelength is approximately equal to 30 centimeter so this means that for the 2g system we would need an antenna of three centimeter and we can house this in our cell phone quite easily so it is more practical now if we move towards the left of it for example low frequencies now say we have this cage antenna so this cage antenna is operating at 1.5 megahertz and this was used in 1922 for communication purpose so at 1.5 megahertz we have a wavelength which is simply uh, 3.8 into 10 is power 8 that is c meters per second divided by 1.5 into 10 power 6 so this is equal to approximately 253 meters and has the antenna size this is roughly 25 meters and from this calculation we in fact have this dimension which is roughly 24 to 25 meters whereas this dimension the height of it was roughly 18 meter so at low frequencies we have these big antennas and as the frequencies increase we have smaller antennas which we can house in our emerging communication devices so this was the first application that is efficient mode of radiation so let us move towards the second application and the second use of modulation and this is basically multiplexing now consider that you have multiple data types that you want to transmit so we can arrange these multiple types on different bands 
for example over here we have a tv signal so this tv signal spectrum has a bandwidth of 6 megahertz starting from here and terminating at this point so this is our 6 megahertz of total signal bandwidth and in this 6 megahertz of bandwidth so from here until here we have the video signal and in this range we have the audio signal so in short we have translated the audio signal over here in this band and the video signal over here so that is we have multiplexed two different data types on a band at different frequencies so this type of multiplexing is achieved by means of modulation as well so another very important aspect is the translation of frequency to a less attenuated band so over here we have frequency on x-axis and the attenuation on y-axis so we can observe that at higher frequencies generally the attenuation is increasing but it is not linear at times you have these peaks which are undesirable and at other times you have these dips which are desirable so if the spectrum is over here so it is important that we translate it on those bands which are less attenuated so that we can have an effective communication so using these environmental statistics we are designing a system whereby we are translating a signal available at undesired frequency to a, uh, to a spectrum which is more usable and more robust so note that this band until 300 gigahertz is in the millimeter range that is the wavelength is millimeter wave and this is one of the candidate technologies for 5G systems and you would observe it is highly susceptible to attenuation so we need these kind of translations for such systems so also a related concept is that uh, the capacity which is the amount of reliable transmission without losses over a given system or a channel so this capacity is equivalent to bandwidth log 2 1 plus SNR this is signal to noise ratio so bandwidth is related with signal to noise ratio and signal to noise ratio is power of signal over power of noise so we have to uh, find a balance where we can use a good bandwidth and we can relate with the signal to noise ratio so note that this is an expression that we refer to as shared capacity so with the rational addressed in uh, this part let us move towards the types of modulation so basically we have uh, two main types the first one is analog modulation and then we have digital uh, modulation so roughly speaking the digital modulation you would see in chapter 6 that they link with uh, shift key so presently we are interested in analog modulation schemes which are AM, FM and PM 